Hey everybody, it's JJ. It's Friday. It's July 31st, 2020. Welcome to this episode, Bulls and Bears. Let's get right into it on what we're going to talk about today. The subjects, the infection recession equals the worst GDP drop ever. Now I've seen multiple, multiple reports on that, so let's be conservative in that since World War II, the biggest drop. Um, without intervention, GDP the drop would have been even worse. What does that mean? Uh, more intervention would have stopped the GDP drop? Really? Oh, yeah, it's true. Let's take a look at that. 30 million Americans face food troubles. This is a continuation of what we've been talking about on this channel for a couple of years. There's not enough self-sufficient people in the U.S. The Fed continues to promise endless help. Now, before we dive into these topics today, I want to apologize to anyone that's contacted me through my email. I yesterday just got caught up with the hundreds of emails, literally, and a lot of more spam and notifications that I had to turn off and unsubscribe to different things. So anyone that had uh, asked me a question, I think, I believe I got back to you unless it got overlooked somehow. But the best way to contact me is through Patreon. And it may not be right away, but I guarantee I'll get back to you if you contact me through Patreon. And it's just a few dollars a month. You also help support the channel when you do that. And you do get additional content as well as uh, more face-to-face -face time, which I don't really do a lot of here on this channel. So just type in either Jason Jaws uh, Patreon or type in Bull Boom Patreon and it should come up in search results. All right, let's get started here. Let's talk about this GDP drop. Um, not really a surprise to anyone that's been paying attention with the infection recession, the shutdown recession, many businesses forced to close down or alter their uh, practices, which a lot of people, a lot of uh, shoppers, I should say, were forced to go to large multinational corporations who had a much easier time dealing with the restrictions and the shutdowns. Of course, Walmart, Lowe's, uh, the Targets, the big multinational corporations saw increased profits during these times where if you look at the Yelp uh, survey roughly half of small businesses are likely not going to survive this shutdown recession so it's pretty sad what's been happening in this country but uh, US economy plunges a gigantic uh, nearly 33 percent in GDP that's the second quarter and that of course is uh, April May and June and is this quarter this third quarter that we're in right now is this going to be any better well, we have many states, including California, re-shutting down and implementing new restrictions. All right, but here's the thing. GDP, it didn't have to drop. I repeat, it did not have to drop. If the government would have did more intervention, they could have manipulated the GDP number. Because why? Because it's a number that's based on consumption. And let's go to another article to back this up a little bit. All right, Market Watch again right here. A massive welfare economy, huge federal aid prevents an even steeper GDP collapse. Right? So think about that. If federal aid prevented a steeper collapse, then would more federal aid have prevented even more of the collapse? Well, the answer is yes, because consumer spending is counted as GDP. So you could go out and let's say you gave everybody this will never happen, but just an example. You give everyone a hundred thousand dollar stimulus check instead of twelve hundred, a hundred thousand. Well, first of all, that would be bad because you're going to see hyperinflation because you would have so many people out trying to go ahead and buy uh, homes and cars, and you would see massive price bidding take place, and you would see inflation take place with all the new buying power. But the GDP number would look great. All the people even uh, spending on useless items and useless uh, goods and services that still counts towards GDP. So people going out to restaurants and spending, people taking vacations, spending. Of course, we can't do it right now uh, as we used to be able to do because of the shutdown. But the point is, it's manipulated and consumer spending, even non-essential spending, is counted in the GDP. And even the World Economic Forum came out with an article a few years ago, five ways GDP gets it totally wrong as a measure of our success. And really GDP, when you look at what it's counted as GDP, it doesn't really measure a truly good economy or a sign of well-being. And here's just an excerpt out of this article here. GDP's inventor Simon Kuznets was adamant that his measure had nothing to do with well-being, 
but too often we confuse the two. For seven decades, GDP has been the global elite's go-to number. Fast growth, as measured by GDP, has been considered a mark of success in its own light rather than as a means to an end, no matter how the fruits of that growth are invested or shared. Now they start talking about the negative uh, aspects of GDP and uh, production and manufacturing, the pollution side of it, uh, the environment, right? But also the top 1% spending. So you could have a bunch of multi billionaires buying airplanes and buying second, third, fourth, and fifth homes, and that would still help the GDP number, even though in reality, most of the population is living paycheck to paycheck, and after a few missed paychecks, are going to be missing meals and missing their rent payments, which is the case right now, actually. Right, but again, the shutdown is being used as the reason for this entire economic situation. And it's very dangerous because now people have taken their eye off of the system as a whole and how much of a failed system that we're living under right now. All right, also think about this title right here, A Massive Welfare Economy. When you talk about welfare, most people think of uh, food stamps. You know, it's the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people. All right, but what about corporate welfare? Not, why is nobody talking about corporate welfare? So... These uh, people come out in the political spectrum and they call themselves conservatives, right? But are they really conservatives or is it just socialism for the super rich? When you look at all the stimulus, all the bailouts, uh, the trillions that have been injected into the financial system right now, right? We know that the left versus right paradigm is a big fraud and both parties are all about enriching the select few while the masses uh, remain in poverty and living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, speaking of poverty, MSN.com here, uh, putting out a Bloomberg article, 30 million people did not have enough to eat last week. Right now, just a few weeks ago, I think it was the 4th of July, we showed you the massive food line in Riverside, California, where I was visiting at that time. It was people waiting over two hours, a couple miles worth of cars, to get a bag of food on the 4th of July when most people probably would have been doing something else besides sitting in a food line. And then you say, well, no, JJ, the economy was shut down. No, people are still going out. People are still going to beaches. Um, many of them have to social distance and are forced to wear face masks. Uh, but people are still going out. So the fact that people waited in a two-hour food line that day, you know, should tell us all a lot about what's happening right now. But yeah, 30 million people did not have enough to eat. Uh, some of that was missed meals, some of that was didn't have enough to eat, they had very little to eat but still had some food. And that report had Americans saying that they had not had enough to eat at some point during the previous seven days. Folks, we've really reached a sad, sad point in this country. I wonder how many of these 30 million were, were kids. And it's very difficult right now for parents to feed their kids, many parents course lost their jobs we know that but even parents that didn't lose their jobs and we've talked about this before are having a very difficult time now balancing not having school to have the kids go to and still being able to work and if you know the cost of child care in this country it's nearly impossible sometimes for a single family household to pay for child care and yet still make enough now of course some people are doing okay with that but the cost of child care, the cost of health care, uh, costs, the cost of living in general has basically skyrocketed because of this unlimited currency system that we're living under right now. Right? And it's much more complicated than that. You also have other programs that are used here in the United States that cause inflation. And a good rule of thumb to think about is if the government gets involved, prices are typically going to go up. Right? Look at student loans. Look at the cost of health care. Right? Colleges and hospitals, they can charge anything they want to because they know that people that are going to get government-backed student loans and on the medical side, they know that people with uh, government-funded health care and health insurance, they'll pay whatever the cost is. Nobody comparison shops when they're not the one paying for it. So think about that. Nobody comparison shops when they're not the one paying paying for it. When you get sick and have to go to the hospital, do you call around at eight different hospitals and say, hey, how much is this going to be uh, for the medication and for the visit, uh, for the consultation? Right? Nobody does that. That causes skyrocketing prices. Well, a lot of this is about to change 
I think once we go through this economic collapse, this financial reset, that we're going to see an, an entirely new system emerge from this. I think there's going to be a mass awakening. I think the sleeping giant is going to be awakened. There's going to be a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, though, as we're already seeing. But I think it could get much worse. I think we're just now entering the woods. And I think a lot of the uh, situations that we're seeing right now, a lot of the anger, a lot of the destruction, I think uh, ultimately it's going to be uh, focused more towards the system as a whole because when people look and see you know, what options we have, there's not a lot of new options being implemented uh, to the naked eye. Now, there's going to be some big announcements coming up here in the next few months that I think all of us are going to be shocked to see how this is going to unfold. And again, something I can't really talk about too much on this platform because when you start talking about what could happen, what's likely going to happen, if it sounds too unusual or too unreal, they'll start uh, basically putting you in the cuckoo camp, you know what I mean? All right, everybody, thanks for watching the support. Appreciate you being here, Bulls and Bears. Ride the bull, prepare for the bear. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and stay prepared. Bye for now.